раздевать. Ни к чему ж не приступишься. А вы чувствуете это лично дома, каждый день? Я получаю вот 200 тысяч пенсию. И я вот работаю. Мне не хватает. Пойдешь в магазин, 50 тысяч, и ничего не несешь. Вот такие дела. Позвал у нас на заводе, уже прям, не знаю, молодежи уже давно нету. Никого не осталось. Один из крупнейших заводов в авангард в Ленинградском я, районе. Я знаю. Полный развод. Я уже сегодня пришел, думаю, хоть бы записку вам дам, хоть бы думаю, это вопрос поднять. Сколько можно, потому что ну, действительно это уже... Я вот 30 лет проработал, и сейчас никому бы не нужно. There will be state property, collective property and private property. The proportions will be flexible and depend upon circumstances. We will have a socially oriented market, not one just to produce but to meet the needs of every social strata. Такие люди есть везде. Это склад ума, это особый менталитет, особый взгляд на жизнь. Elected in 1993 to the Duma, Grigory Yavlensky became the favorite presidential candidate of many urban professionals, new entrepreneurs, and the liberal media. But many commentators doubt that a nation in pain from a Western-backed economic experiment would choose yet another pro-Western economist. If you would ask me about the previous years, I would say, my school was there, my kindergarten was there, my friends, my first love, my first relations with the Beatles, which played a huge role in my development. Beatles was something which changed my mind dramatically, much more than the communist propaganda. Our revolution, which everybody calls revolution, is still at the very first day. We have no property. We have no demonopolization in the country. We have still the same communist leaders in the power. Mr. Yeltsin is a uh, member of the Communist Party Polit Bureau, as we call it before. And Mr. Chernomerian was a Soviet minister in the Soviet government. So the people feels very much we have the same leadership with the same mentality. For my generation, there is no such task to create a new system in Russia. For our generation, is a task to solve the other problem, to give the Russia possibility to speak, to express itself, and to find out what kind of a system people in Russia want to have. You mean that today the Russian people don't know what kind of system they want to have? Uh, we don't know what kind of a system Russian people want to have. Does Grigory Yavlinsky know? No. Grigory Yavlinsky knows for sure that Russian people want to have a possibility to create the system in their country as they want to have. And if they don't believe in what you believe in, would you leave politics? Uh, sure. I would say that we have a different view. I want to have private property, freedom, human rights, and law. If they want something different, this is, this is not my game. One possible president. <laughs> Thank uh, you, sir. Just a speaker of the house hanging out, trying to learn about Russia. The democratic opposition has a, a most popular and young leader. Uh, I mean, first of all, Grigory Yavlinsky. He has his own economic and political program. He has a, a very good team of supporters who demonstrated um, rather uh, high professional qualities. And uh, he has uh, experience, political experience, that's um, very important in our situation. You just said that you have more sympathy for the Yablaka, the Yavlinsky. Yes. So, who would you say that there was such a thing?
I was going to go to the people and say, hey, I think first of all you need a strong head, strong brains. You had a strong hand so many times in your history. What was the result? Are you happy? So why to repeat? Maybe once we would change the history. <laughs> Even after being released from prison in 1994, Alexander Rutskoy remains a highly controversial figure. For some, a martyred hero, but for many others, a reminder of the bloodshed in the nation's capital in 1993. Most Moscow pundits write off Rutskoy's chances for a political comeback, but some evidence suggests he has substantial support in the provinces. I have worked as a metal worker, an aviation mechanic, a locksmith. I attended the local art school. I was a pilot and a soldier. My grandfather and my father insisted that I become a soldier because they knew that I wanted to become an officer. And they said that you can't become an officer if you haven't first been a soldier. I served in Afghanistan in 1985 and 1986. I was badly wounded in the spine. I returned to Afghanistan as a deputy commander, but I insisted on flying more combat missions. I didn't fly again because I wanted to fight, but as a deputy commander I flew so that the young pilots under me wouldn't perish. I'm proud of that, because there is not a single dead pilot on my conscience. Even though I came up through the ranks and became a general, I always behaved democratically. I always said, here is the law, and I don't care if you're a rank-and-file soldier or a general, either follow the law or you'll be punished. And that is how you have to behave if you are the president of the country. I was standing behind the White House, and I saw a small memorial, and it was written, Zdis pagibli Patrioti. Here died the patriots. What did that mean? Patriotism means love of one's country and people. Yeltsin, his Prime Minister Chernomyrdin, and his former acting Prime Minister Yegor Godar are not patriots because they don't love their country. In your Great Depression, gross industrial production fell 30 percent, but ours now has fallen 50 percent. That means the deindustrialization of our country. And deindustrialization of a country means the loss of economic and then political independence. A country that is economically and politically dependent on other countries is what? I'd like to hear you say it. It is a colony. My government will focus all of its resources on solving the seven problems on which the stability of society depends. Housing, food, health, education, science, culture, and the environment. And where will you get the money to do this? Where would you get the money? Just, ju just a minute, we'll get to that. So our program differs from all the other movements like the communists, the Zhirinovskyites, the agrarians. All that is empty talk. They have no real plans. I can give you all my plans. They're in those files. Take housing, for example. Russia has plenty of cement and timber, but no housing. In order to deal with this problem, we will create a government system of state credit banks where a person can get a long-term loan without interest for 30 years so he can build his own house. But where do you get that money? But where do you get the money? You have, to, you have to print the money, which creates inflation. Don't worry, we'll get to that. Okay, let's go on. What does individual housing solve? It solves, for example, the problem of child rearing. Because if a woman has a child, we will cancel 10% of her loan. И, наверное, храбрый летчик. Для идентификации в политике у него слишком много поворотов э, во взглядах. 
Я не знаю, можно ли его поддержать, потому что я не знаю, каких взглядов он будет придерживаться послезавтра. Рудского, за Рудского бы я голосовала. За Рудского бы я тоже. Рудского я люблю. Мы все его любим, Рудского. Почему? Ну, потому что он нам ничего плохого не сделал. For me, Roosevelt's New Deal is the greatest political and economic example. In your Great Depression, gross output fell 30 percent, and that was considered the brink of economic collapse. But it has already fallen more than 40 percent here. We need a New Deal policy in Russia. Президентский и парламентский. У вас есть предпочитания кандидата? Я не я и это предпочитание не делал, не ходил на выборы и в этом не пойду. Да. А что изменится? Был Ельцин, Будет уже другой. станет другой. Ничего не изменится. The electoral process begun by Gorbachev in 1989 continued in the Yeltsin years, despite some postponements and irregularities. But by 1995, no one was sure, not even parliamentary and presidential candidates, that more elections would take place, at least on schedule and fairly conducted. The only peaceful solution to the situation is elections, preferably early elections and lawful ones. They must be held under reliable supervision because there will be gigantic attempts to falsify them. Well, computer studies show that in the previous elections in December 1993, Yeltsin's Electoral Commission tricked the Russian people. Anywhere from five to nine million voters voted for one thing, but the result was the opposite. So there is certainly a precedent, and the same thing could happen again. Easy for Yeltsin to cancel elections? Easy. In our situation, the problem is not only the date of elections. The main problem is what kind of elections we would have. We had elections in 40s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 50s. That we always had elections before. So for every citizen in Russia, the word election, elections, means nothing. That's for you means something that you are not even thinking about that. Like glass means glass, chair means chair. For us, elections means absolutely nothing. In my conversations with Clinton, I told him that Yeltsin's commitment to democracy will be tested by his willingness to hold the next elections. Clinton said that in his discussion with Yeltsin, Yeltsin said that there would be legal elections as called for by the Constitution. So what if he promised your President Clinton? Whenever Yeltsin says something, you have to turn it around by 180 degrees. If Yeltsin and his group want to leave office without turmoil, they should hold elections at the appointed time, fairly, and then to live out their old age in dignity. But history has no example of tyrants and dictators willingly giving up power. And if there are no elections, what will Yeltsin or his representatives say to President Clinton? But dear Bill, I really wanted to have these elections. I know I promised. But you see what is happening here. A terrorist will plant a bomb at a voting place and will kill some of my electorate. How can I permit such a thing? If there are no presidential elections, no elections in Russia in the future, what will be the result? There will be an authoritarian regime of Boris Yeltsin or his court. The king is made by his court. How would you react if there are no elections? Peacefully? Peacefully? No. What would you do? I won't tell you. Troubles at home have made Russia's loss of superpower status abroad doubly hard to bear. Not surprisingly, opposition leaders have also attacked Yeltsin's foreign policies, focusing particularly on Russia's relations with the United States 
NATO and the former Soviet republics.